Could you ever stand straight on your own without a crutch? Could you ever hear the words in your Hey everyone, welcome to the first making of video for Johnny Rock and Friends for the record. Uh, the song we're talking about today is called Hourglass of Red. Uh, with me to discuss the making of this song is the composer, an excellent guitarist and vocalist, my good friend Andrew Reynolds. Good to have you here, sir. Likewise. Um, also with us today is the man who played both rhythm bass and lead bass on this song, Max, <laughs> Max Feinstein. What's up? Hey, Max. All right. Let's get right to it. So the three of us have been playing this song for a while with our band, Precious Roy. Uh, Andrew, could you tell us a little bit about what inspired Hourglass of Red? It was a breakup. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. You remember when disaster struck. So um, this was an acoustic song of yours for almost a year. We jammed on it one day with the electric guitars, and we've stuck with that arrangement ever since, right? Pretty much, yeah. I want to say it was about the summer of 2011. You just sort of sat me down and said, hey, I've been kind of pissed lately, so I wrote this. <laughs> and... I was like, yeah, that's that sounds pretty angry. <laughs> it's like this scornful Dylan-esque kind of lyrics. And then once we did the rock version, it was, you know, it was so catchy and so raucous I had to have it on the record. We began recording our glass of red on May 30th, 2013. Uh, this was the first song to have drums put to tape. I'll, uh, I'll play you a little bit from our digital copy of the 16 track. Uh, the drums are on tracks 1 through 7. I did this in a single take, no punch-ins, straight through. Wish every song could be so easy. On track 16, we have Max's main bass part from July 3rd. We have a fuzz bass that comes in on track eight, comes in in certain parts. What we ended up using was a very strange model. It was an Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. The, the real clincher here were the strings on it. Uh, they were not round, they were not flat, they were called semi-rounds or semi-flats. I forget what the actual term for them are. The lead tone, was my ESP with an electro harmonics bass synthesizer on it, uh, which kind of gave it this distorted but muffled, uh, really cool tone. I'm, I'm really a fan of how that thing sounds. The fuzz bass also does these bits of punctuation in the choruses, uh, which actually was just Max fooling around. <laughs> We ended up liking that part so much that we just put it on all of the choruses. Uh, remains to be seen if they'll all be used, but they are there. Uh, tracks 13 and 14 are the two rhythm guitars. I'll come back to those in a minute. Um, on track 9, we have guitar through a Leslie speaker. And, you know, in the bridge, too, we uh, we used a Leslie cabinet, and that was really cool. I got to, you know, play, play a guitar through a Leslie cabinet. suggested that you try that watery kind of sound just you know something to match the lyrics you know yeah, go, through, right. go through an actual Leslie speaker uh, that was that was pretty cool it was great <laughs> I really, really enjoyed playing that thing I love this thing <laughs> now, Andrew's lead vocal is on track 12 uh, Max's background vocals are on 10 and 11 I'll solo all of those for you maybe you do but you stay dry! So the main part really just came so right off the bat when I wrote the song, but the bridge was added after the fact to begin with, and that's really been a work in progress throughout the entire life of this song. You know, Max and I, when we've uh, uh, performed it acoustically, have done it a lot of different ways. And the way that we did it in the studio, that that's really the bridge part is, you know, I think really finalized it. We wanted this build up at the end there with uh, with a lot of voices, so we just had um, myself, Andrew, Max, and John Bross, our engineer, uh, all got around one microphone and uh, tried out a couple of things. 
It was a lot of fun to get to try out different harmonies and just to see, you know, maybe this interval is going to work better. Oh, what is that? What are you even singing? Is that even a pitch? We have too many dissonant notes in this, this one. I think all of us, including uh, John Bross, worked together. Sorry, I was doing something else. I wasn't thinking of you. <laughs> Here we go. We ended up going with a uh, just doubling up a unison part, which comes up at the very end here. You guys kind of, you know, uh, gave me a lot of pointers on a, a way to carry it through. You know, we went with a pretty simple approach, but it's very direct and mm -hmm. straight ahead and, and I think uh, more powerful as a result. Could you have us yeah. right? You're coming in on the could you right. Yeah. Let's try it, man. And stay out. The intro was uh, it was pretty hard to punch in because we had a click track in the song, but right. it, it, it didn't really start exactly where you needed the vocal to come in, so we had John, like, conducting. Could you ever stand straight on your own without a crutch? So, back to our rhythm guitars. Andrew would normally deliver a pretty great performance. Uh, he had lots of energy. He'd sing along with it like it was a live performance. But we had a lot of technical issues, and it took almost three full sessions to get those guitars tracked. You know, the first day my guitar didn't work at all. Um, it was messed up from the weather. Um, tried to fix it by tuning down and putting a capo on it. That didn't help. Uh, this was our first pass from July 3rd. Some pretty obvious tuning issues there. Uh, when we returned on July 16th, we switched over to a different setup and we recorded over those. So we ended up using Max's Les Paul um, through one of the amps that we had at John Bross's studio. And uh, I believe I was using one of my distortion pedals to, through it too. And um, we double tracked that. And after all that was done, it turned out that there was some noise in the signal. When you listen closely, there's this nasty, static-like noise going on in the top end. Uh, that turned out to be a wiring issue at the guitar amp that we later fixed. We came back and did it again. Uh -huh. Uh, this time I think we went right to the Les Paul and the the Fender Super Reverb, mm -hmm. but this time you know I used some uh, uh, digitally modeled distortion mm -hmm. uh, between my guitar and the amp, and it sounded killer. And then we doubled that this time using my uh, Gretsch 5120, and the, those two guitars combined really just make for a gnarly, rusty nail killer, <laughs> nasty sound, you know. The tone is like tetanus. It's not gonna chop your head off, but it's gonna get like rust up your nostrils. Um, we took a much more cleaner, kind of experimental approach to the bridge, uh, just to complement that that Leslie guitar. Uh, tried a couple of different effects on one on one of the guitars, and uh, I'll play those for you now. This is all of the guitars put together in the bridge section. And with that, we finally finished recording the song. All right, well thank you, Andrew, Max, uh, you guys rock. The song is Hourglass Red. The album is Johnny Rock and Friends for the record. Uh, here's your one minute sneak preview, enjoy. Don't remember why I looked at you.